This is a quiet place nowadays. It's tough to believe that once it was the center of industry, but that was a long time ago. This bare swamp creek starts as a spring about three miles upstream and flows to Skinny Atlas Lake. Its power used to run 15 mills, but because of progress or changing times, there are only two left, one that cuts wood and the other that grinds flour. Together, they're known as New Hope Mills, and both are run by one man. Well, I'm sure this little old mill never produced as much as it is right now. Once I get the thing running in the morning, I'd, uh, I'd like to go do something else, let somebody else run it, because I can't tell one kernel of wheat from another. They all look alike to me. Leyland Weed has done many things in his life. He's worked on farms and oil fields, and in machine shops and foundries. He takes what he's learned and puts it into his mill. When Leyland took over New Hope, it was in mighty rough shape. The roof leaked and the foundation was crumbly. Without him, it would have gone down the stream like the other mills. On bad days, many things can happen, like broken belts and more customers than you can handle, and, and uh, maybe a bearing go bad or something like that. Uh, but if you think you, you know it all, it'll teach you that there's one more you haven't learned yet. It don't break down a lot and you keep it well oiled because you don't want it to break down because there's just one fellow that I know of that's going to fix it and that's myself. As you walk about New Hope, you feel as though you're part of some great dusty machine. Everything works together. The old turbine harnesses the water, which turns the huge leather belts that move the sifters. Buckwheat, cornmeal, rolled oats, and pancake flour are stone ground here. The sifter from great granddad's day sorts the grain eight different times. It goes up and down the mill nearly a mile. Bran goes one way, mids the other, and germ still a third. Over and over to the flour is as fine as dust. There's three metal bins that hold 100 tons apiece and the mill itself will hold 300 tons. But it's all upstairs, there's none of it on the main floor. I don't know what holds it up, but I do know what holds it down. Sure, it's an old-fashioned way, but that isn't what makes it different. Anything that comes out of New Hope is free of all chemicals. Leyland wouldn't have it any other way, and it wasn't easy. He had to fight the state government to do it. We're not having any great trouble now, but uh, we're... Um, happy that it worked out this way because we satisfied our customers and ourselves. Got everything? Got everything. We're all set for today. Uh -huh. I'll just go ahead and sign that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, go ahead. Okay. We got about half of it up anyway. Yeah, we're gaining. Even though the pancake mix outsells others in stores, most of the business here is still done over the counter. Nice to do business with you. Yeah. A place this old has a lot of history. Before he was president, Millard Fillmore worked nearby, and there are tales of horse thieves and traders who somehow disappeared near the stream. There's an old legend about this place. It goes back to when it was being built in the 1820s. Then the village was known as Sodom. Well, they say a worker climbed to the ridge pole atop that mill up there, slung a gallon of whiskey over his shoulder, and renamed Sodom New Hope. Well, it's pretty well known in New Hope, and when I travel, people would ask what the weather is here. It's better not to tell them because they think I'm exaggerating. But uh, we have snow here in December, and very often it never melts until uh, March. So when people come in here and are surprised to see how much snow we have, I tell them, well, we don't use it until it's a year old. In the cold December sun, the turn of the water wheel is hypnotic. At first glance, the mill looks like a museum, a piece of heritage. But in one way, New Hope turns to tomorrow. It's run by water, and that's a fuel cheap and not likely to run out. Leyland even has a plan to someday build a hydro plant at the sawmill upstream. Our light bill kept getting up and up and up, and we wondered. They made uh, electricity here at the mill until 1929, and they didn't charge more than a dollar and a half a month, and we wished we could get it back to that, and we decided maybe we could do something about it. We can keep fire out of it, and, uh, and the government getting too rough about it. I'm sure it'll continue because many people ask, what will become of the mill when you're done with it? Well, I have uh, 
deeded it to my son so I know it will be running when I'm dead and gone. It's not every day we find something that meets the challenge of time and keeps going. There have been some changes since New Hope ground its first bushel of flour in 1823. But what hasn't changed is the simple, rough, pure way it's done. Leyland Weed and the men before him are the reasons why there is new hope. I like to do things myself. I don't like to rely on um, Social Security or anything like that. I came here crippled, and I didn't want to be a part of that. And I never thought I'd ever do manual labor. Thought I could lift never nothing heavier than a teacup. But after 33 years and a few accidents, it's still kind of hard to find hired help that'll outwork me.